All right, why don't we go ahead and get started? Uh, if other people join in, they'll just miss this short introduction. I'm Nancy Verdun. I'm with SCORE. And today we're presenting Protecting Your Small Business, Safeguarding Against Cyber Threats. Neela Four is um, someone who I had the pleasure of hearing speak at our chapter meeting um, last month. And she presented the same type of topics that you're getting. And I, I, told, I left that session and went home and had some call to action for my own cybersecurity. So I know she's an expert in the area. Um, she has a wealth of information. Uh, you can see her um, background here on the slide, but I think we're gonna all learn a lot from her today. Small little plug, we have an upcoming webinar in November about lowering your business expenses and improving cash flow. You will also find that on our website. But I know we all came here to hear the presentation, so I'm going to turn it over to Neela Fur and let her begin her presentation. Thank you, Nancy. So I'm Neela Fur Tamboli, and uh, I work full time for Verizon as a principal risk management. Um, I am a lecturer. I teach since the last three years. I've been teaching uh, at Rutgers. Um, and uh, I, I have an MBA. I'm currently doing a doctorate. I've got this bunch of certifications in audit, in uh, security, in fraud, anti-fraud, and uh, a bunch of other risk management uh, domains. I have two, do uh, two patents issued, um, and I volunteer. I was a SCORE mentor, and I have seen firsthand the amazing work that uh, SCORE mentors do. One of the things that I teach tell people usually is that do not take advice from somebody who is not where you want to be. And that is why I really appreciate what SCORE mentors do. They have been where you want to be and they can share invaluable experience with you. So let's get started. So disclaimer, the views expressed in this presentation are my personal opinions, do not reflect the official policy or position of my employers. And this is my effort to contribute to the SCORE community and pay forward the many kindnesses and instances of support and guidance that I have received. Okay, so usually people say like 90% of what we worry about like never happens. Today, we're going to talk about the 10%. This is a very recent survey done and in which small businesses, this was like uh, September 27, 2023, and small businesses are under, underestimating their cyber risk despite increased th threats. So what are they saying? 60% of business owners said that, you know, yeah, I, my business is too small. This could never happen to me. But according to the US National Cybersecurity Alliance, 60% of small businesses go bankrupt 60% after they have been, there has been a cyber attack against them. Why does this happen? Because small businesses are overconfident and they are underprepared. 58% believe that, you know, I mean, nothing's going to happen to them. They are too small. How, how, how could this happen to me? And then 43% of them do not have a plan. What if something happens? So this is why we are doing this same webinar today. And it's, I'm, I'm helping out. This is October is the, National Cybersecurity Awareness Month. And I just want to make sure that everybody who has an or, or a small business or is planning a small business looks at it very early on. Like, how do you? And it's not very difficult. So we are going to go through a broad range of things that you can do right now today. And even if you do not have a business, even as a person, as a solopreneur, something that you need to put in place right now. So small businesses lack proper protection. And, and why does this, why does this happen, right? Um, because 65% of them manage their cybersecurity in-house. And, and that's great, right? Because you're starting a business. It's not like you have stuff, uh, money for scheduling somebody. You don't have IT staff. Probably you manage stuff online. So this presentation is going to help you prepare and give you actionable steps that you can take today right now on to get a little more secure than what you need to be. So what are the most common attacks? Ransomware, identity theft, 
breach of customer data, and then business email compromise. If you see something like this on your screen when you open your computer or your laptop or whatever, it means that you have been a victim of a ransomware attack. Now, how do you prevent it? What are you going to do about it, right? So basically, never clicked on any links that are sent to you via emails or, or via SMS or any other way, right? Do not open any untrusted email attachments. Only download things from sites you trust. If you do not trust somebody, something, do not, because it's obviously going to be something that is they are, the, the threat actor is trying to send some kind of malware to you. Avoid giving out any kind of personal data. Use a mail server or content sc scanning. Depends like on what kind of business you have. If you're a solopreneur, then that's, I mean, and you're using Gmail or you're using any of these other free things, then that's fine, but just be very careful. Never use unfamiliar USB drives. If you find a USB drive, which is like left somewhere, do not plug it into your computer, your laptop. It's, it's, it's the last thing that you want to do. Use VPN when you are using public Wi-Fi and if use any say software um, to enable anti-malware protection. So great. Now what is identity theft? It's basically a fraudulent acquisition or use of a person's ident personally identifiable. And what is identity fraud? It is when that information that belongs to you is used for any kind of fraudulent use. What is, so this is what FTC has shared with us, like impact of identity theft. And okay, great. So now you know what identity theft is and how to protect yourself, but can you prevent it? Like, okay, there are a bunch of things that you can do to prevent. First thing is opt out of any pre-screened offers. Uh, maybe you get these offers in the mail or, you know, so just click on this and I will share this with you. I will share this um, presentation with you. All the things that you see in blue color are these links that you can go out and opt out of pre-screened offers, then place a security freeze on your credit file if you have not done it already. And then you can check your credit report for free. So basically what you do is every quarter means every three months, put a put a um, calendar um, reminder for yourself that you can go in and pull up a credit report so every 3 months you you can pull that up if you are you have been a victim of uh, any kind of breach probably that that um, business has already provided you with one or two years of credit monitoring so you already have that in place right now if not then this is great Okay, great. Now, review your bank and credit card statements. Read your statements of benefits which is sent out by your health insurance carrier. Sign up for ID, ID theft monitoring service if you do not have it already. Um, use a password manager. What is a password manager? A password manager basically keeps track of all your passwords. So you then have to like only take care of one password manager, a password for the whole everything, and then it will it will keep track if there is a breach it will tell you to change your password for that particular website use multi factor authentication so what is multi factor authentication most of your banks most of your email service providers etc will provide you with a dual factor so either they will say okay great every time you sign up we will send you a one time password or you know any kind of, so that is multi-factor. And please sign up for that, use it. Yes, it is a little bit, um, it, 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 it causes friction. It's a little bit painful, but you know what? It's better to be secure than to be sorry. Do not click on links in the email, sign up for paperless billing. Why do you need to do this? Signing up for paperless billing helps you by not exposing your information in the mail so that somebody can like grab it from your mailbox which is outside then do not provide any kind of 
personally identifiable information to a caller over the phone and keep your computer software updated. If suppose you get a thing saying update your phone or update your laptop or update your uh, desktop or whatever. So make sure that you update it. So suppose uh, say you have an Android device, make sure that if there is any kind of updates, they are like deployed right away. Do not wait. And then if you get anything in the mail, then shred all mail with any kind of personally identifiable information. And if you do not get any kind of mail, like this, I'm talking about your hard mail, right? From the post office. The post office also provides you with an option to sign up for getting um, a email every day. US, go to your USPS.com and sign up to get mail delivery information. So it will give you a list of all the mail that you're going to get every day. Yes, one, you'll get one email every day check and, and check the if, if that mail, mail is missing. If it is missing, then log into your USPS.com account and make sure that you report that. Uh, so either you might get it the next day or if you if it's missing, then in that case, you know, they will launch some kind of an inquiry. Okay, great. Now you've done all these things. So now is your identity safe? It's not like hundred percent, but at least you are doing things to procure uh, to proactively manage it. So now we come to breach of customer data. What exactly does this mean? Who are the threat actors? Who are the people who are trying to you know breach your stuff? External people, twenty six percent are internal. One percent is your business partners. And what are the motives? Finance, financial, right? People are trying to get some kind of a financial benefit by breaching your customer data. So then how are they trying to do it? Credentials. So trying to get your user ID password. If you are sharing it with your um, spouse or you're sharing it with your uh, somebody who works for you, be, be extremely careful of not doing it. Do not like there has to be a really, really very good reason for you to share any kind of passwords with people. I know people do it, especially when they have a solo business. But you, what you can do is sign up for a password manager and the password manager will provide a secure way of sharing. So they will not allow a person to share credentials directly. They will allow you to add another person who can use those credentials to do something. So that is, uh, and, and suppose that person were to leave, you can quickly like, you know, uh, remove their access. So top fa fashions that we see for identity theft, it's phishing, account takeover, social engineering, malware or ransomware. So now we are talking about just how to pre prepare, how to secure your customer data. Like forget about customer, how to secure your, your data. Train yourself and your employees secure user ID passwords, use multi-factor authentication. Again, for the eighth time, avoid clicking on any links, do not install any software that you did not buy and collect only information from your customers that you want to provide service. What is the cost of recovery? It is extremely expensive, so that is why we are trying to put in place controls or put in place things that you should have so that you can secure your stuff because recovery is extremely costly. And if you were to see that ransomware notice, it means that, you know, you do not have. So how do you, how do you protect yourself? Make sure that you have paper records. Make sure that you have backups. and Another risk that small businesses run is business email compromise. So what exactly is a business email compromise? Uh, email compromise it means that somebody is using your email account. Either it is spoofed emails or something to deceive you, your employees, your partners or your vendors. So what exactly happens? You might get an email, your employee might get an email, your vendor might get an email which says, hey, can you send or transfer money or, you know, 
can you just send send this amount of uh, amount to so and so bank or can you change my bank account so who who are who are people who this could happen to if you are a relator or you send regularly as course of your business you you send uh, send out uh, money from your bank accounts so maybe you are sending out money to your vendors you are sending out money to your partners you are paying bills you are like asking your uh, cust cust um, partners or your employees to transfer money to their to somebody's account this business email compromise is extremely real and this is how it happens so basically what happens is that the threat actors or the 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 bad people criminals what they do is that they will look at your business if your business transfers money suppose you are involved in any kind of real estate transactions or you you routinely um, uh, transfer money uh, via via transfer then then they will target you then what happens next is that they will probably create some kind of a phishing email or phishing campaign which is looking at your maybe social media profiles looking at what you are doing um you might post stuff because if you are a small business you are going to try and get business through your um, um facebook so probably you post regularly on facebook you do it on linkedin or you have or some other kind of this thing right you send out emails to get get to get new business so they will craft some kind of social media campaign against you you will get a social you will get an email which will like convince you that you know they are conducting same some kind of a business transaction with you and try to compromise you subsequent to that they might send a email which is similar to an email that you would send to your business partner you would send to your employee asking them to transfer money the thing is that it is so genuine and so close to something that you would do that your business partners would fall for it so how can you stop this employee training is extremely important as a regular course of business suppose you are transferring amounts via wire transfer then this is extremely important to you set up some kind of a some kind of a out of band confirmation what is out of band confirmation so suppose normally you you send out a email or maybe you send out a text saying like transfer this money to so and so in that case set up a, a process today which says hey if you ever get any email from me asking you to transfer money or if you get and and same thing you can do with your vendors right so say say you receive money regularly from some business tell them that if anybody sends you any kind of email any kind of text any kind of uh, letter or something which says change my bank account from this to that make sure that you speak with me before you make any changes okay use multi factor so this helps you so there is an additional layer where you know even if your email is compromised now at least it's going to be difficult for that like you know your email to be compromised because you are using an a, a multi factor authentication okay if you have any kind so so here's what you can do today you have a domain name go into um have i been squatted i've shared the link below and put in your put in your domain name over here you will get a list of other domain names which are very similar to you okay great now what do i do next step create an email filter which says if you get an email from any of these similar looking domain names then send them to spam send them block them now this what what this does is that it is going to secure your employees from clicking on or getting emails from any of this and every month go back to this have i been squatted 
because what this does is what is e it, squatting is it creates something type of squatting is it creates a domain name which is very similar to yours and then tries to compromise like send out emails from there now if somebody sees which is very similar to your domain name they are more likely to fall for it okay then establish some kind of verification process that we talked about previously right so suppose make sure that this is a business process so it's more about technology as much as it is about technology it is it is as much about some kind of a process that you put in place a business process so if you are receiving wire transfers if you are receiving any, any kind of bank transfers or any kind of credit card transactions where you send out a email or you tell your employees or your business partners you need to have a verification process in place and make sure that your verification process is not the same thing that you would do like suppose you are sending out a very email asking them to transfer money your verification process cannot be sending out another email or asking them because if somebody has compromised your email account then it's going to be pretty pointless or useless you know so it has to be out of band so suppose text message will work if you are confirming an email stuff right somebody like sends out an email to your accountant saying hey send me um w2s of all your employees on your behalf like suppose you are the business owner and suppose your cpa gets an email saying hey send all the customer uh, all the uh, w2s then in that case make sure that your procedures with your this thing any kind of email that you receive from me do not send out anything until you receive a text message or i speak with you on the phone or whatever in hey, nc do we have any questions come in uh no there's no questions yet anybody um on the call if you have any questions just you can raise your hand or um put them in the chat okay great so an ounce of prevention is worth a lot of money please as a small business this is a huge amount of trouble for you make sure that you at least take these precautions and it's like an 80 20 right so once you like close your door lock your business properly then that person goes to somebody who is trying to steal from you goes somewhere else because it's not 100% because if somebody is say it's a disgruntled employee somebody is trying to like you know do a targeted attempt against you then it's difficult but if it is just general spray and pray kind of attack against you at least these things will protect you to a, a big extent if nobody has any questions thank you so much today for seeing and connect with me on linkedin if you have any questions after this thank you so much and nancy thank you for allowing me to pay it forward in whatever little way i can i appreciate what you do and what score mentors do on a daily basis for our small business owners